Thank you very much. Um, last man standing, I would say. So um, if it's getting too hot, it's okay if you have to leave the room. Um, first of all, before I start um, with my talk, I have to do a little warning. Um, first, um, there will be no slides on content strategy in general. Um, I think that the term content strategy is itself is a little bit difficult in, in my way of thinking because I think there's something like a business strategy or a culture strategy, but it's very hard for me to get the term content strategy because there are so many things which are content and which are deeply linked. Um, like doing things, it's deeply linked with content because content is just putting this in communication channels or something like that. So no content strategy slides. Second, um, this is just a case story told by me, head of communication and content at a small German private university. So if you're interested in big brands or in not interested in case stories or case studies, you are also allowed to leave the room now. And the third thing, there will be no stats or infographics at all, no insights into technical tactics uh, because of different reasons. First of all, I don't want to bore you with that. And you can ask me questions afterwards how we do this with tech tactics and what is the measurement of success and things like that, but not in this um, case story. Um, so I would like every story starts, it's like once upon a time. And this is quite funny because actually this is our president of the university right now and he's sitting right in a lecture and this is a lecture about resources and resources is, well, you can say a pretty dry topic in a way, but as you can see, we try to make it a little bit less dry by storytelling, and so he's wearing the storyteller hat. So I think this is a pretty good image for this case story as well. So once upon a time in 2008, um, there was a small university in Karlsruhe, Germany, um, which is which was called actually Merkur Internationale Fachhochschule. It's like kind Merkur International University of Applied Science. And this university um, had a couple of problems, real problems. Um, first of all, uh, they had unsatisfied students, unsatisfied professors, unsatisfied admin staff, accreditation in danger, accreditation is something like the TÜV Siegel, like a quality uh, label for university, so this was in danger and this is very important for university not to lose. And there was a really kind of Stalinistic atmosphere, you know, that was kind of top-down organization, you had one big boss and he told everybody what they had to do, uh, even the professors, the staff, and so on, and even the students. So this was not a friendly atmosphere. And as you can see, like the architecture, it all looks like the old school system, like the front um, lecturing and things like that. Um, they had a really bad infrastructure, no internet and things like that. Um, and there was an unstable finance situation because this was a private university. We depend on paying students and they have to pay really a lot of money. And so this was a problem too. And in the end, there was no real vision or philosophy for the next couple of decades or even years or months. So in the end, this place was really messed up. And so, there was a need to change. And the people in there started to think about how can we change things. And they, they tried to um, talk to the big boss, and he said, no, I, I won't change anything. And so something happens. Um, the people 
come together and they started a mutiny. Mutiny, is it the right term? Like the Meuterei of the Bounty. And they started to capture the whole place. And they really get it done that they complimented out the big boss in a way. So he had a kind of um, greeting role or something like that. But he wasn't anymore in charge. And in the end, we call that the Baden Revolution, because Karlsruhe is in Baden. It's a kind of, of district. And uh, that kind of revolution story also appeared later in 2010 in Brand 1, a German economic magazine. So uh, you will find this again in the internet. You can read the whole story again, what happened there. So at that time, at 2009, just, before the rev uh, just after the revolution took place, on Saturday evening, uh, at, I think, 20, 2015, prime time watching, I don't know, Wet and Das or something like that in the German television, I, get, I got a phone call. And I was pretty amazed because this was a very strange phone call because it was a sauna call. It was from inside the sauna. And in the sauna, there was the president sitting inside there talking to a friend of him about the future of the university, what they should do and what they need, like marketing strategy and things like that. And he said, well, Patrick, I would like you to invite to come to Karlsruhe and help us um, to build a whole new university. And you may be um, a, good, um, a good one who can do all the blogger relation or blogging digital ambassading and marketing strategy and things like that. Um, the guy was, I, I knew him before because I knew him from my blogging um, history. So I wrote a blog many years ago, the Verbe Blogger, where I wrote about marketing PR and he read this blog years ago. So he knew me and I knew him because he was at this time the CEO of Yellow um, energy, yellow strom in Germany, and he reinvented the energy brand um, at this time. So I knew him and I said, wow, this sounds pretty interesting. So I said, okay, I come by and I will help you out. So there I started with almost nothing and a lot of difficulties because um, there were a lot of conflicts because in the revolution there were many fights. You have different kind of opinions in there. So there was a lot of chaos in there, I felt. But on the other side, it was very solution driven. It was a very creative atmosphere to work in. Um, then there was this buried brand. It was totally destroyed as I um, describe it before, um, the students were in a riot, the professors, and even the students started to write recommendation or reviews, bad reviews on the internet on this old buried brand. So this was a tough mission, but this was a mission to do, and I, this was a real challenge for me. Um, there was no marketing, marketing team at all, but there were a lot of good students who had fun and who wanted to change something and who wanted to um, join the marketing and bring the whole university forward. And there was no time to lose because it was, I think it was March and if you work in a university at March people start to get interested in what they want to study in future and they apply usually around June, July, something like that. So there was nothing at all, no brochures, no website, so a very old, crappy website. So there was no time to lose. But on the other side, um, this was very important, I had really a lot of freedom to act. So I don't have to ask for every task, the president and the committee and things like that, I could just do and start doing, and this was very important afterwards. 
Um, and I had no, I even said the F word, um, experience in universities. So I even broke up my university um, studying, and, but I was willing to win, and I want to uh, get really interested in the topic of uni uh, university communication. So um, I try to accept the challenge. And the first thing I did when I started and looked at all these difficulties was um, I started to declare evolution and change inside but also outside, in public, as a blog post. So this is a new design, it looked very different, but uh, the topic was very the same. It, it is called evolution. Um, a university is reinventing itself. And this was a tagline, reinvention, change, and um, evolution. So this was also the epilogue of everything which followed up. And I did this for a certain kind of reason, because as you might know, if you ever joined a change process inside the organization, things from time to time doesn't really work very quick. Um, but everybody is looking for change. And if they don't see the change, they get pretty nervous. And so I wanted to really um, write out there in public that, come on, we are in a change process right now. Things are bad right now, but it's getting better and better and better. And this was very important. Um, meanwhile, inside, there was also something happening. Um, there was a little story. At first, when I um, came to the university, I had no office. So I had to sit down in the cafeteria, or so-called cafeteria, because it was like um, more ugly chairs like this, some ugly tables, an old coffee machine. And so I needed a room to do my work with students. So um, we occupied an office room and said, come on, people, from now on, this will be the free room. Um, and free room is an, uh, is an analogy to the term war room of public relation. In a war room, you start to um, create campaigns or you start to solve a crisis or something like that. But I said, well, I don't really like the term war room. War is bad and I, I'm more a peaceful guy. Um, so I said, this will be from now on the free room. Um, and that means everybody was invi invited to join the room and help me to make a new university communication, content, strategy, whatever. Um, so this was also a kind of very important staging. So our university um, looks very detailed on the term staging, that means staging in everyday business. So like going as a company, uh, making an IPO, also zu Börse gehen, this is a kind of staging act because you have to um, make some fantasy stories and they present good figures and things like that. Um, so this was also a kind of staging act. It, it, it's kind of symbol. From now on, here is change and you can join. It's free. Come on. The next step I did was I invited people, as I said, to do this, and I also bought some cool stuff for them because they were filmmaker fans and they wished, please um, buy us some cameras that we can start to experiment and things like that. So I bought them some uh, pretty good video toys at that time and they were happy and then they started just from their own, um, a kind of initiative called Backyard TV. And they started to creating content at nine uh, 2009. And so in the end, the first very, or very first strategy for me was, um, first of all, setting up all the basic stuff. So getting a team together, uh, making the basic 
mar marketing material like brochures, setting up the website and things like that. But um, the very first strategy, and it's still um, our main strategy of the university, is connecting. Connecting people, connecting topics, networking, and connecting inside and outside. This is very important for us as a university because I think universities are very great social hubs. But most of the university are not aware of this and don't use this in a, in a certain kind of way. So this was a very, or is right now, a very important strategy, connecting people and topics. And we do this with different tactics. For example, networking by content creation. This was um, uh, a stage-like t uh, uh, TV talk. This was in Karlsruhe, and Karlsruhe um, is a huge... Um, there was a huge topic in there for uh, some years ago. They wanted to build uh, a kind of underground train through the whole city. So right now you have a lot of construction... Um, what is it say, construction sites, I don't know, Baustellen? Yeah. And there was a very rough discussion on that, and you can see uh, one guy, he was what, from the city, a representative, and some critiques on that, and they started to make a talk show on that topic. So it was a little bit like the pre-event of the Berlin airport things, or something like that. Um, this was very amateur-like, um, but in the end it was very interesting because we connected to the people in the region and for the first time they get no to us because uh, just before they didn't know us or they did uh, know us in a different context. So we do networking by content creation, by bringing people together, talking on a certain um, kind of topic. Meanwhile, in the university, we had to not only restart the whole image, we had to restart the name as well. So we, we couldn't work with a buried brand like Merkur FH, I don't know. So we renamed it to Karlshochschule, International University. So there was a new name and a new identity. And I would say something about what is the identity or what was the vision, because at this point we didn't have any manifestation of the vision. This was just a dream. We want to go in a certain kind of direction, but there was no seenable uh, manifestation. So what was the identity or, or the vision? Um, first of all, we wanted to do a cultural orientated economics, because we are a management school, and at this time, or even today, many classic management universities just pray the old sentences on, on management, like the homo economicus model, that means that people are not important, figures are more important, for example. And we wanted to change this, so cultural orientated economics. We wanted to... Um, look at economics from a cultural perspective, like looking at the relationship of people and not only on facts and figures. Second was, we want to focus on creativity and innovation. Um, so innovation, creativity with management, this I think was very new. And we want to put our focus on sustainability and responsibility as well, because we wanted to build a new generation of managers, not the old style um, like you see on TV, which get billions of, of dollars and then don't uh, care a crap about other people. And we wanted to make an intercultural approach, not only international, like giving them more language courses, we also have content on intercultural issues. That means like, what happens if two different cultures uh, meet together? What are the conflicts? What can be improved? And 
is there one culture and the other culture, or is it fuzzy in a way or something like that? And we want to make, or in the end, we want to have some rule breakers and game changers who question all the um, standard theories and things like that. And we want to make multi-perspective views and focus on personal skills, not like learning all the facts inside and then put them out um, for uh, examination and then this all is forgotten. We want to help people to just, for example, learn. How can I learn things and how can I combine things and interpretate things? Then we have this kind of cu cultural content because I think the, the um, um, company culture is very important and it's very important for content strategy itself because you need a good setting of corporate culture to make a good content or communication um, strategy. So we had a kind of feedback loop culture. We have everywhere in our university there were feedback boxes. People can put in things they wish or they want to improve. And we had a kind of cycle um, to um, even fulfill these wishes in, in s from time to time. There was a kind of personal atmosphere. You can meet the president at the floor or have a talk to him, or you even get the, his mobile number or things like that. So in the end, it's, it creates other difficulties, but it's uh, also a special kind of thing. And you have a kind of open culture. Constructivist didactics, that means not the usual front lecturing like I do uh, with you right now. So it's, it's more like more brainstorming, writing cards, working on projects. We even make uh, simulation, business simulations, more like a playground and more like a play space. Um, the biggest room in our university is called play space. There's a big sign on it and we really mean that in the end that there is a play space inside the university. And we want it to be service orientated. Um, that means we want to help people if, or the students if they have questions, we want to answer them quickly. Um, and we want just to give them a kind of support that they feel familiar with this organization because this is a thing we can do as a very small university. In the end, all these aspects, in the end, uh, led to a certain kind of slogan. But this took years um, to get this slogan in the end. And the slogan was management or rethinking management. In, in German, it's management understanken. And this had some reason. First reason is, I think the, the term management itself is, is burned in a way. So we try to reframe it and to give him a new meaning and not only give him a new term, but to, to give him a new life. And so um, all we do is like, is this management different in a way? And we always question ourselves uh, exactly this. And the first visualization of the dream, of the vision, the next strategy, which... Um, was visualized in our website was find your perfect role. Because at that time, um, we didn't have any good pictures of inside. This was a, a crappy place. It looked boring, ugly, and so on. So we had to use a kind of stock photo website campaign. And we just tried to reduce the maximum of information on this website, and if you compare this university website at that time ago to other universities, you would really see um, the difference, because it was very big pictures. This was 2009, now everybody has big pictures, but at that time this was really a rule breaker in the university um, area. So. We focused really on, on this, the pupils or the students who want to study 
and we try to um, we try to to give them um, an opportunity for the future and try to um, give them a, a, a role. Um, then this was pretty successful for a couple of years. And then I took an intermission as a responsible person. I was out there for one year or something for another project in, in e-commerce. And then I came back because then there came the second phase of the change, the change of space inside the university. And this was really pretty amazing for, for me. Um, so we had this problem. Look at the, roo look at the room the frontal lecture, you have the chalkboard and things like that. So um, very early, um, the people inside the university said, this is a no-go, we have to change this. And then we rebuild build the whole inner core of this university. And we also documented this on, on Facebook as well, for sure. And in the end, ta-da! the manifestation of our vision got real in the architecture. And right now, if you go from here or here, and right now it looks like this. It's totally different. So what did we? We did we put away all the walls because it looks like a very um, old administration building and things like that. We want to make transparency real. So the communication strategy at this time was also very transparent. So we, we um, talked about the, the change process and things like that. And this is also a staging inside the architecture. We want to make transparency happen. And this is, I think, in the end, a very different atmosphere. It, it, it is um, amazing how much you can do um, with architecture and, in, and inside architecture and room staging and things like that. So, for example, now we have a real cafeteria. <laughs> um, this is called Karl's Café. And the other interesting thing is this is also... Um, students are running this place in their spare time. So this is a kind of ongoing project. Um, they sell the coffee, they um, run this place in the end. And we have a lot of, for example, event management students who really could learn what is it like to work in, in such places. And they can really learn by doing in that. And so I think this is a pretty good idea to combine people, students, learning tasks, and also the architecture and the living atmosphere in there. So suddenly, after this whole reinvention of the architecture, um, we had a new, complete new strategy. This was a real strange for the, for the content strategy or communication strategy in the end, because we had now the strategy turn the inside out. This was nothing we could do before, because you can't show the ugly rooms and things like that. Even if changes happened inside, you can't tell this by picture or visual storytelling. But this changed everything, and this was also the reason why we said, all right, we have to change these old website with these big stock photo pictures. We, we want to get real, and we want to turn the inside out. And so we also um, did a relaunch of the website. And all the pictures you can see is like or are real pictures happening inside, real in this university. And it always is a kind of ego perspective, the POV perspective. You are inside the happening. And this was the intention to create this big website and also keep the big pictures, which may be very um, attractive. So no stock photos, real pictures from life inside. And this was also a start to go further with our networking strategy. As I said, connecting people. 
And so we started to host events. So for example, this was an event of the youth um, press organization in Baden-Württemberg, the youth press, press. And there were 400 young people who are working in media and they really liked the place and really liked the conference. So we act like a host because our interest is to get as many people inside our new atmosphere um, that they can see this, can be amazed and maybe spread the word on their own. Because I think this is a very important thing in content strategy. It's not so important that you tell a lot to the people. I think let the other people talk about you. This is something, for example, Apple does. So Apple don't have an official Facebook account. They let their fans talk about them. And this is pretty much a little bit the same, so we are not Apple. But in the end, we try to give other people the opportunity to talk about us outside, and we talk a little bit less about us, for example. So the whole strategy of turning the inside out goes over all the materials and marketing. So we build a new um, trade fair, um, I think it's called Booth or something. Um, so we try to bring a little bit of the university into the trade fairs as well and create a kind of atmosphere and you um, have again the look inside, the new atmosphere. And um, besides again, one very important thing for us is to invite our students to be part of the whole communication thing. And these are some of our uh, university ambassadors. So these people drive to the trade fairs, talking with uh, pupils about this. We have um, also, they make some workshops in schools about, they no about their knowledge they got in their study time and things like that, and they really help us out. They are very good ambassadors, and I think you need this as a university because you have not so much budget as any big brand and things like that. So you have to concentrate on um, inspiring people, rewarding people, um, and give them just the support that they can talk about their university and that this university gets a really favorite place for them. Um, so this whole thing, you, as you can see, it's, it's like a red line going on. And on Facebook right now, we make something like um, um, one story a day. So we try to make every day one little story from inside or in the area of this university. This is one of the only, I think, structured thing or one of the uh, structured thing we really do in content marketing is try to push the people to make one little story on that. So then I'm, some of me know me as an um, enthusiastic podcaster, and I also use this kind of podcasting for not only to create good and interesting um, content and not only to... Um, make some science communication. I also like to network again with people and try to listen to people and to their topics. And so I started a little podcast series called Karls Dialogues. Um, and here, for example, it's uh, Markus Beckedahl about net neutrality. Um, and the idea about this is that we make podcasts not only with our professors inside, we also make podcasts with people who are related or linked to our topics. And we are very interested as we um, offer media um, and communication management and also in our master study program, we have the new media specialization. So we are also interested in net neutrality uh, net policy and things like that. So we invite interesting people who can say much more about this topic than we can. 
and then we create content. And this content connects people, this content entertains people, it gives people some knowledge and things like that. Um, the other channel is our blog. Uh, regularly, not so regularly in the last couple of months, I block things. It's also the same thing like um, getting inside a debate, like an, I call this awareness window. So if you look at, oh, there's a fly. Um, if you like look at media out there, there are always a certain kind of topics which pop up, like the NSA or something like that. And then uh, an awareness window is opening. And this is a chance for you as content creators to get inside this awareness wi window and create new content on this special topic. And you can give the topic a new perspective. And I think this strategy, if you create good content, it's uh, very successful. So to be a part of the whole discourse and stream out there. So finally, um, time is up or, yeah. So finally, you can see all of this cultural content and manifest it in our Carl's movie. This was the last big project of, of our team. We created a movie, but we don't just hire a TV production company or movie production company. We just want to do this again together with our students. So the whole process, students were invited in creating this thing, taking part in this um, thing, and in the end even always invited in the whole process. So before I show you um, the thing, because it's a couple of minutes long, I give you the opportunity to get out of this room and join the other um, sessions. But if you are really interested in, in watching this film, I will show that afterwards. It sums up all the things we uh, did in the whole change process, in a way. And it's also, also the perspective of the viewer which may be interesting. Hey, how's it going? My name is Lee Derrick. Welcome. Let me give you a quick tour of the place. Here we have our service desk. So if you need anything, want anything, come here and they'll help you with a smile on their face, even if it's really early in the morning. Thanks. Let me show you the rest of the place, come on. The next stop is the library. Now here in the library, we need to be a little bit quiet because people are studying. You know, you can write your thesis here, you can write seminar papers, and if you need a place to quiet down in a cool, um, calm atmosphere, then this is the place to go. Let me show you the rest, come on. Can you get that, please? Thanks. All right, so the next place, the next place is the play space. We can be a little bit more louder this time, obviously. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. So here in the play space, students like to get together and work on group projects together. A lot of the times, events are held here, seminars, and generally everything that has to do with a whole bunch of fun. Uh, this tour was short and sweet. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope to see you in the future. By the way, I think your toast is burning.
Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're the project group of Telltale Hearts, and we're supposed to develop a positioning strategy for the new product of the company, Telltale Hearts. Our problem is that in addition to the positioning and the target groups, we're also supposed to develop a preliminary marketing plan, and that's where we need you because we're not sure how to do this. So could you please help us? Aren't you going to take that call? Purpose of management. So, what do you think? Please discuss that in group. Let's go. All right. Some ideas on that? Okay, then let me start, please. I think that this topic should be viewed from different perspectives. I mean, I think that you can interpret management in different ways, for example, as an act of control or as an act of inspiring people. Right, I don't think that management is something which has, has to control people, but I think most of the people out there think that this is management. So I think that it's maybe time to rethink it and reframe it, maybe. Yes, but we shouldn't forget that management is also in charge of creating success for the company. We shouldn't forget the goals of the company. Yeah, but I see management more as a process of ordering the chaos. Right, but you also need the chaos to order something, right? What do you think? Time's up. So are your results. What do you think? You group, what do you think? Management is ordering the chaos without killing it. Right? Not killing it. Like you're killing your keyboard right now. Hey, over there. Hey, have a seat. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. We're just planning the next steps of the Karls Cafe, which is a student-initiated project. We sell, of course, coffee. Well, excuse me, a damn fine coffee, I would say. Um, besides, we also offer a variety of hot and cold drinks, as well as snacks like pita or tart flambe. Yeah, and they are delicious. You have to try them. You want to taste? We're also cooperating with the um, student board of Council Schule. We're organizing um, lots of events, such as a weekly after work event, um, semester opening and closing parties, FIFA tournaments, and so on and so forth. In fact, we're actually um, right now speaking through some new ideas. Yeah, we are about to build a second Cars Cafe at a music festival, the Happiness Festival. In fact, this is also organized by some of our students from event management. Our aim is to create a chill out area beside the crowded mass. You can enjoy a good cup of coffee and get into talk with some of your fellow students. So, what do you think? Are you in? Nice idea, pal, but now your imagination is running absolutely right. If you want to join us, we could use a crazy mind like you. So maybe some words on this. Um, some of you might think this is pretty much too long in a way. Um, but our experience is this was a, had a very widespread because people who are interested in studying a certain kind of program just finish to watch that. It's not for the ordinary public like maybe you who are not interested in studying, but all the people who are looking there in the internet, and this is the main source for pupils or young students to, to get a university, they search this, find this, and most of the time really watch this until the end. And I think this gives you a really good look inside 
the university and atmosphere. So next steps, and I finished um, a couple of minutes. As you heard in um, the movie, they talked about to moving the Karls Cafe outside. And this will be the next um, project for us to get to touch point of, of young people. For example, the Happiness Festival, which is also organized by, by students from us. And there we will build a second cafe and get in touch with people. So this is also content in a way, just to creating and staging things. So the rest is top secret. Be sure that we continue to evolve. Um, but you may ask me something. Maybe we go outside here from <laughs> the sauna. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Patrick. Um,